This is WNCT 9 on your side weekend edition. Well, as we head into Monday, we're going to have a first alert weather day in effect. We got a lot of weather to throw at you on Monday. We'll go ahead and get you started and show you what's happening out across the nation. And you'll see this low pressure that's sitting over portions of Texas. This is our next weather maker. And yes, it is going to bring some chances of some snow and some freezing rain as we get you into Monday. So that's going to be one of the big issues we're going to talk about is a wintry mix for Monday morning. And then we've got warmer air coming by the time we get into Monday afternoon. That'll lead to some thunderstorm chances as we get you into Tuesday morning. So I know it's a lot to throw at you, but it is a first alert weather day for the mix of some winter weather early Monday transitioning over into some possible severe thunderstorms. We're going to time everything out hour by hour, counting by counting for you coming up in your first alert forecast. Nine on your side weekend edition starts right now. Yes, it was love at first sight. A Greenville couple shares their secrets after 63 years of marriage this Valentine's Day. Plus, will North Carolina primaries be affected by redistricting? All eyes are on Raleigh as lawmakers wait. And a new poll is out after last night's GOP debate. We'll break down who's in the lead in the race to the White House. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Katie Harden. Happy Valentine's Day. One couple here in Greenville is keeping their love alive and celebrating 63 years of marriage. WNCT's Allie Weatherton sat down with the couple and has their secret to love. He's perfect for me and I'm perfect for him. Mary Dunlap says she'll never forget the day she locked eyes on Don Trapier. It was love at first sight. It all started back in 1949 at the YWCA dance. After that, they were inseparable and decided to tie the knot on Don's 22nd birthday. He's the, he's the best husband. He's the best grandfather. No, I wouldn't say he's that. He's the best uh, no. uh, everything. The Trapiers have been married 63 years with four kids, 12 grandkids, and 10 great-grandchildren. Both say marriage isn't a piece of cake. So we just sort of, I guess, balance each other off on that, you know. Yeah, we're definitely different. We're different, but uh, we're just blessed by each other. We could have found a reason to separate if we'd been looking for one. We just never looked for it. We just never did. The two had plenty of ups and some downs, but say it's important to believe in a higher power and have some laughs along the way. My personality, I'm laid back. I, a lot of things just, I don't care. I just, and she doesn't like to have me say, I don't care, but I don't care. <laughs> so she just puts up with me. <laughs> Don believes love never fails. He says it gets stronger as the years fly by. Just because you've been married as long as we have, doesn't mean you can't, you, you can't still love one another. You really can. In some ways it's even better. On this Valentine's Day, the Trapiers say it's important to remember your love, even if you don't have a significant other. So we just, we're great to be. We're just thankful to be together that we've got each other. We got our family. We're all close. In Greenville, Allie Weatherton, 9 on your side. And speaking of Valentine's Day, tens of millions of Americans will celebrate the Day of Love today. It's also a big day for businesses. People will spend an average of $147 this weekend, which adds up to nearly $20 billion nationwide. It's actually the fourth most lucrative event on the retail calendar behind Christmas, back to school shopping and Mother's Day. A Greene County family of nine is without a home tonight after an electrical fire broke out at their house this morning. Bullhead Fire Chief Daniel King says the call came in around 8 o'clock this morning for a fire on 25 Lane Road. Family members inside the house at the time were able to get out of the house. No injuries were reported there. King says the fire started and was contained in the laundry room. The family is being taken care of by the Red Cross until the power can be turned back on in their home. Tomorrow, state lawmakers will hold a public hearing to discuss a redistricting ruling. It's a controversy that could impact the March 15th primary election and is heading towards the possibility of a special session late this week. A week ago, three federal judges ruled that lawmakers used race as a predominant factor in redrawing congressional districts 1 and 12. District 1 covers a wide area here in the east, while District 12 is out towards Winston-Salem. 
Friday, lawmakers announced that they will hold hearings since the judges ruled the lines must be redrawn by this coming Friday. We feel very strong in our legal argument. Our attorneys have advised us that the districts we have, which of course were cleared by the Justice Department years ago, are, are fully compliant with law. Lawmakers have asked the U.S. Supreme Court to grant a delay in this case. The plaintiffs have until Tuesday to respond. If the Supreme Court does not grant that delay right away, a special session would then be likely for the end of this week. Thousands of teachers at ECU are paying close attention to the mailbox. Tomorrow, the university will notify any faculty member if they are considered underpaid. Last year, ECU conducted a study to ensure salary equality. While there weren't any major issues, some staff members hired during the recession feel as though they are paid less than their counterparts who were hired more recently. Dr. Ronald Mitchelson told WNCT the school is working to provide pay raises for those not getting paid equally. The North Carolina Supreme Court will hear arguments on whether a 2013 law violated the constitutional rights of teachers. The law says the General Assembly can strip job protections from public school teachers. A lower court said lawmakers couldn't revoke the rights from veteran teachers. Groups representing other public employees like police officers and state government employees say that their benefits are now at stake unless the Supreme Court sticks to the principle. In the final week before the South Carolina primary, a new CBS poll shows Donald Trump with a commanding lead in that state. Craig Boswell has the latest from Greenville, South Carolina. Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio was out looking for votes Sunday in South Carolina. If you nominate me, we are going to unify and grow this party, but we're also going to unify our country. Rubio is riding a wave after Saturday night's debate. 32% of Republicans and independents in a CBS News poll declared him the winner. I thought Rubio did a very nice job. Donald Trump finished second in the poll. The billionaire businessman clashed with Rubio and Senator Ted Cruz. Right now today as a candidate, he supports federal taxpayer funding for Planned Parenthood. I disagree with him on that. That's a matter you of principle. You are the and I'll, single and I'll biggest you. liar. You probably are worse than Jeb Bush. The sudden death of Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia has also been on the minds of the candidates and some voters we spoke to. Should President Obama no nominate uh, someone to the Supreme Court now or should the next president? I think he, she should nominate someone now. You think President Obama Yeah, he has it? a choice and he has the ability to do that. Obama may nominate somebody, but it won't get through the Senate this year. For the Democrats, Bernie Sanders made the rounds on the Sunday morning news programs while Hillary Clinton campaigned in Nevada. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Greenville, South Carolina. Former President George W. Bush plans to campaign with his brother in Charleston on Monday, making his first raid into the 2016 race. And with the North Carolina primary just around the corner, here are just a couple of dates for you to remember. Voter registration ends by this Friday, February 19th. Absentee ballots have already started. Early voting begins March 3rd, and the state primary is March 15th. Stick with WNCT online and on air for full election coverage. Still to come on None of Your Side, Weekend Edition. Hundreds of thousands of people attended the Pope's open-air mass in Mexico this morning. We have all the details on his historic six-day trip. And we've had the bitterly cold temperatures around, but we're going to be talking about some 60s in your forecast not too far away. But we've got a first alert weather day to get through. We'll talk about it all in your first alert forecast.
Now your WNCT 9 first alert weather. Well, we had a cold weekend, to say the least, for Valentine's weekend. But as we start your work week, we're going to have a lot of changing weather. So you're definitely going to want to have that first alert weather app handy because we're let's go ahead and start going into it. Here's your first alert weather day, and you can see we've got a wintry mix possible early, getting into the overnight hours into to Monday morning's commute. And then we've got a chance of seeing some thunderstorms as we get late Monday into early Tuesday. So I know it's a little bit crazy in the weather department, but you can see here Viper 9 radar starting to show some snow showers making their way into the picture. Now I'm not totally settled on this just yet. We have some cold air to say the least. You can see temperatures 30 in Greenville, 26 in Washington, 23 in Swan Quarter. And back where we saw some of the snow showers, 28 in Goldsboro. But the dew points are still holding near almost a zero degree mark for many of you single digits. So while it's very dry in the atmosphere, I feel like a lot of those snow showers showing up on Viper are probably sublimating or evaporating before it even hits the ground. So we'll start to moisten up the atmosphere, though, as we get you through your overnight hours. And yes, we do have a winter weather advisory out for many of our western counties. And this orange color here is actually a freezing rain advisory. And this is an effect for the morning hours through your lunch hour on Monday. Monday. So here's what we can expect. We've got some light snow, some sleet, and some freezing rain possible starting during your overnight hours, getting you into Monday morning. Now it will start to change over into just a plain liquid rain by the time we get you into your noon hour, and it'll do so from southeast to northwest. And then we've got the light snow accumulations possible. We're not looking at big accumulations by any means, but you know with ice, it only takes just a little bit to cause some problems. And that's why we'll go ahead and, and allow yourself extra time on that Monday morning commute if we do have any hazardous roads out there. Like I said, just takes a little bit of ice to make some big problems. So here's your hour by hour forecast. You can see as we get you into the overnight hours, may start to see some snow showers in some of those northern counties, temperatures well into the 20s. And then by the time we get you into, say, Monday morning, you can see some some of this freezing rain, that's that pink coloring here, starting to make its way into the picture, especially those western counties. And I want you to notice this line here, the line between the pink and the green, that's between the rain and the mix. You'll notice that it starts to back its way towards the northwest. It's all this warm air starting to make its way in off the ocean. You can see by the time we get you into 1 o'clock, we could see 50s across many of our areas, even maybe a touch of 60 as we get you into Monday night into Tuesday especially along those coastal regions. So I do believe the winter weather will stay in the central to northern places. And then by the time we get into Tuesday morning, you see lots of rain will make its way into the area in the form of some thunderstorms as well. So we can't rule those out with possible gusty winds as well. So a lot's happening, but after that, things will begin to calm down. So here's the big picture. A warm front lifts into the area. That's going to help provide the freezing rain event that we'll see. Ground temperatures will still be cold. Upper air temperatures a little bit warmer. Here comes this low pressure in here, and that'll help to spark some of those thunderstorms as we get you into Tuesday morning. And then finally, we get the secondary front moves everything out. And then by Wednesday, we're looking mighty sunny outside. So that's going to be some good news. So we've got the first alert weather days in effect for Monday and for Tuesday. That's for our temperatures will be in the 40s by the time we get you into Monday afternoon, 60s by the time we get you into Tuesday, and then we'll finally level things off into the 50s and maybe some 60s by next weekend with lots of sunshine once I get you into Wednesday. But to stay updated with the First Alert Weather Team, we're going to be on social media. We've got you on WNCT.com, and we've also got you on the First Alert Weather app. So many resources to keep you updated through this whole entire event. Yep, and Maria, Dante, mm -hmm. Jessica, all in tomorrow, keeping a close eye on the road, on the road conditions because, like you mentioned, just a little bit of ice is a big problem. Yeah, so. that, that little bit of glaze can make a huge difference in road conditions. All right, thank you, Candace. Now, still to come on Nine on Your Side Weekend Edition, we'll have more details on what Brazil is doing to prepare for the Zika virus, as well as what is happening here locally by a school system to help protect your kids.
This is WNCT 9 on your side weekend edition. More than 300,000 gathered to witness Pope Francis celebrate Sunday Mass in what's likely his biggest event in Mexico. The Holy Father circled over a Aztec ruin before landing 20 miles outside of Mexico City. On his way to Mass, an estimated 2 million people greeted Pope Francis with the yellow and white balloons, the colors of the Vatican flag. Pope Francis specifically chose to visit this poor suburb notorious for deadly violence, drug trafficking and kidnappings. Many of those who couldn't get into the mass lined the Pope's route for their chance to see him. Amazing, amazing, I'm nervous. Why did you like him? Por qué te gustó? Porque es, andaba en un carro blanco y a mí me gustó su carro. You liked his white car? Te gustó el carro blanco? Sí. 10,000 police officers and presidential guards were on duty to keep the Pope safe for this stop on his historic six-day trip. More than 200,000 soldiers fanned out across Brazil to explain how to stop the spread of the Zika virus. Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff launched a new campaign called Zika Zero, urging people to be engaged in the fight. A similar campaign is being developed here in the U.S. President Obama asked for nearly $2 billion from Congress, not just to protect pregnant women, but to guard everyone from getting bitten and spreading this disease. According to state and county health departments, there have been 81 cases in 21 states of people with the Zika virus. The CDC continues to advise pregnant women to avoid traveling where Zika is being transmitted. The U.S. Preventative Services Task Force released new recommendations regarding depression. With depression and suicidal rates increasing, new research suggests all children ages 12 through 18 should be routinely screened for depression by primary care doctors. In Beaufort County schools, preventative task forces are already in place for students. Superintendent Dr. Don Phillips Phipps, excuse me, urges parents and teachers to be on the lookout for changes in their child's behavior. But I think if you know what your children are doing, if you know who they're involved with, if you know what their normal habits are, their places that they're going, the things that they're doing, you, you know, it, it pays to be nosy a little bit just so that you know what's going on. Parents who suspect their children may be showing signs of depression or having suicidal thoughts can contact their school for additional help and resources. And still to come in sports, ECU baseball is just about ready to rock and roll. We'll preview the pitching staff, plus the 2016 NASCAR season is also getting underway. We'll recap today's Daytona 500 qualifying when we come back. Sports-wise, now that football's done. Now that football's done, nothing. I really don't like a lot of other.
Good evening, everyone. Those engines are humming again. The 2016 NASCAR season's gearing up. The Daytona 500 is a week from today. However, this afternoon in the poll qualifier, we found out who will sit first and second for the Great American Race. It's part of Speed Week. Sunny Florida. Today's results just determine the first row of the Daytona 500. Places 3 through 41 will be determined this Thursday. Dale Earnhardt Jr., he won the first round with a top speed of faster than 195 miles per hour. Wow, but the final round was controlled by Matt Kenseth, who will start second next Sunday, and your pole sitter is Chase Elliott. In the new 24, Elliott at just 20 years old, he'll be the youngest driver to start first in the Daytona 500 ever. Elliott, of course, is taking over the 24 car after the retiring of Jeff Gordon. His top speed today was 196 miles per hour. Oh man, this is a very, very cool day. I don't know that the, this opportunity has sunk in yet, much less sitting on the pole for the Daytona 500. So this is very, very cool. Um, you know, Daytona 500 qualifying is about the team guys and the effort they put into these cars. And it's nothing special I did. It's really just what, what, what kind of work they did this offseason to make it happen. And the college hoops, ninth ranked North Carolina hosted Pittsburgh today in Chapel Hill. Roy Williams back on the bench after his tumble last week. Pick it up on the first Pittsburgh driving. Kennedy makes the block. Justin Jackson, the pass to Marcus Page, who throws it down. Page just over six feet, but yeah, he's got hops. Big lead for the Tar Heels. Page had 15 on the day. And more heels showing off on the offensive end. Page to Jackson, the feed to Bryce Johnson, making it look easy. Johnson had 19. North Carolina shot 59% from the field, and the heels power past Pittsburgh, 85-64. Next up, UNC will get Duke on Wednesday. And ECU softball wrapped up its weekend series today in Arizona. The Pirates fell to Nevada today, 2-1 to one. East Carolina. Won the first three games of their 2016 season at the Kajikawa Classic before dropping these last two. The Pirates are back in action on Wednesday visiting Charlotte. And this time next Sunday, East Carolina will be in the thick of its first baseball series of the season. The Pirates will welcome Longwood next weekend. Let's talk pitching. Features. This ECU pitching staff, it features depth and experience in its staff, something pitching coach Dan Roselle is cautiously confident in. I love the staff that we do have coming back because we have a lot of veterans that have been there that have done that. You know, Jimmy Boyd, Nick DeRazzo, Evan Krasinski, Jacob Wolf. You know, those are just some of the names right there. They've they've been in there. They've been in those battles. They've been in those spots. So we're comfortable with those guys, but all these younger guys are pushing them daily. So that first ECU game is this coming Friday against Longwood. And coming up tonight to the NBA All-Star Game, it's been a pretty entertaining weekend. Yeah, it's a very busy weekend. A That's lot right. of things kicking off, getting underway. I know football season's over. I'm sort of sad about that. But the dunk contest was really cool last night. Yeah, so. that, was, that was pretty wild. We'll see if the All-Star Game and Kobe Bryant's final All-Star Game, if it can live up to the hype. Like you said, it's, it's already been a great weekend. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Patrick. Stay with us. We'll also look at your forecast after the break.
So it looks like we do have a little bit more of that winter weather in the forecast before we get to some sunnier, more brighter, warmer, nicer, temperature. yeah, more all lovely, around <laughs> better forecast. Better maybe. weather, yeah. <laughs> we'll go ahead and get you over to graphics and show you what you can expect. Getting you uh, through the overnight hours through about noon tomorrow, we'll see some light snow, some freezing rain. We've got a freezing rain advisory out for many counties, so uh, not everybody's going to see it, especially the further at the coast you live, but. Uh, otherwise, it could be some hazardous travel conditions for Monday morning because it only takes just a slight bit of ice to make some problems across the area. So we have our first alert weather days in effect. You'll see the temperature says 47. That'll come more towards the afternoon and evening hours. We'll steadily climb those temperatures as we get you in the overnight hours in the Tuesday up to 60. And yes, we have a chance of thunderstorms. So I think we've got a little bit of everything for everyone from winter weather to summer kind of weather thunderstorms. And then we finally got lots of sunshine in store for you once we get to Wednesday through the rest of the week. So, so everything up, everything yeah. is frozen. But once those temperatures get warmer, it's so, going to be nice. Yeah, yeah, we'll get past, get to Wednesday. Let me get to Wednesday. I know, <laughs> but also a good time to download that first alert weather app. Definitely. It's free, really helpful. I use it all the time when I'm out in the field. It's so. very nice to have. Mm -hmm. Patrick does too, I think, at games. Absolutely. Yeah, well, we got a sports uh, <laughs> portion of our app as well. I mean, yeah. obviously right now there's a lot of weather going on. Sports <laughs> is a little bit drier right now, but let's not forget about this side of the table. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick, and thank you for joining us tonight. Happy Valentine's Day. Hope to see you back here at 11. <laughs> Good that time. I don't